right, YouTube, welcome back with part two of my James Bond book collection. This time we're going to get into the books about the film series themselves. And really, the reference book based on the James Bond films phenomenon started with, as far as I know, this. Stephen J. Rubin's The James Bond Films. And this is a reissue. It originally came out in the early 80s, and this one was released in 83 to tie in with Octopussy. And never say never again. And it was the first kind of a attack on, on breaking down the films and you know, giving a little bit of history of Ian Fleming and the casting of Sean Connery. And then eventually going into film by film. But yeah, it's a really cool book. And uh, Stephen J. Rubin is uh, notorious for being one of the members of the band commentary tracks on the original Criterion Collection CAV laser discs. And uh, apparently he claims that Eon wasn't too thrilled with with him, mostly because he was just frank about what films he liked and, and didn't like and what he thought worked and didn't work about the series. And, uh, oh yeah, Tom Mankiewicz, talk about something that didn't work with the series. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a cool book. goes up to the uh, early 80s and includes Never Say Never Again. So, yeah, if you're going to pick up a copy, I mean, there is an earlier 80s one, but this is definitely the one to get because it's a little bit more complete, so to speak. Then, um, by the time the late 80s had rolled around, Sally Hibben was the go-to person for official James Bond merchandise. This is the making of License to Kill with the official James Bond 007 emblem there. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, I've seen all the making of pieces on the DVDs and the Blu-rays and everything, but uh, these making of books are really cool and... Uh, a little, even sometimes, you know, tales that you haven't heard, and uh, this is originally six pounds ninety-five pence. So uh, some of these, I don't know if they were ever released in the states, but I had to. Wow, look at Michael G. Wilson, He's super young back then. Um, so I had to import some stuff. Unfortunately, there was a lot of stuff that only came out over, over across the pond, but. I decided, hey, I better uh, import them from my own book collection. Yeah, really nice release, great full color photography. Yeah, like that one. And Sally Hibben also put out around the same time a revised version of the new official James Bond movie book, now including License to Kill. And uh, it's got a dust jacket, but pretty much just the same thing on the inside yeah nice uh gun barrel bit there originally cost uh 17.95 with a albert r broccoli forward very nice uh book indeed and uh yeah 200 color and black and white photographs inside Oh, there was a couple printing errors, too, I noticed on the um, pages like this, where you can see information from later films like creeping in in the background. Not sure what that was all about. But yeah, this is all uh, Honor Majesty Secret Service information. <laughs> but still, that said, printing errors notwithstanding. It's a nice release. It does, you know, like most of them, go through film by film. Kind of gives you a little bit of breakdown of the plot and uh, all the characters, etc. And then in the back, it's got a little bit more in-depth uh, cast and crew credits. Uh, yeah, nice, nice book indeed. Then uh, this thing's a little lame looking, but <laughs> Lee Pfeiffer and Philip Lisa, the authorized incredible world of 007. Never really liked the cover of this guy, but still pretty cool release and uh, 
the fully authorized book on the world of Famous Secret Agent. Not to be confused with the last fully authorized book that we looked at. Uh, again, kind of same, same tactic, just breaking it down film by film. But uh, you know me, I have to uh, continue to be a sucker for all things James Bond. And uh, it does talk a little bit more about, uh, it's got some great uh, imagery from the posters there. It does talk a little bit more on the cultural impact of, um, of the series as well. Oh yeah, they even have the Criterion Collection Laserdisc image there. Um, and if there's ever any of these you want to see like really in depth or like a spotlight review on or something, one book in particular captures your fancy, uh, give a shout. I'll take a, a nicer, cleaner look at it. But uh, towards the back here, it talks about the the success of it and, and how that transferred into other films and the toys and merchandising. Yeah, there's some interviews in the back, which are really cool. Morris Bender. Ken Adam, uh, Vladek Shevel, Peter Hunt. So yeah, it's a nice book. Again, not really uh, thrilled about the packaging, but who cares? This was the first like kind of Bible reference book I'd picked up, and this was this has been revised and re-re-revised. This one I picked up in the mid '90s. The complete James Bond movie encyclopedia. Again, Stephen J. Rubin involved and uh, there is another encyclopedia that we'll look at a little bit later but this will always be the the benchmark because the other one which I'll show in the next video kind of breaks things down by categories etc and this does not this is a great encyclopedia it just starts with a and goes all the way through and doesn't kind of muddy things by breaking everything down into subcategories so I uh, highly recommend you find the the newest version of this. I'm sure it was redone a few years ago. This was $25 in, what, 1995? I think I bought this actually before GoldenEye came out, too. I think they had had a little bit of early info about the GoldenEye script that they were able to talk about, but I don't think it had actually been released in theaters. And it gives a big write-up, of course, about the main films, uh, but then it talks about every character, every actor every gadget, every car, yeah, it even talks about elements of the uh, of the novels. I think I saw Dr. Shatterhand there a second ago from You Only Live Twice. Oh yeah, Dr. Shatterhand's castle. Um, yeah, this thing, it does have a few errors here and there, but I'm sure they may have been corrected in the future pressings, reprints. Uh, it's just a sweet killer book and if you just want to sit down and tear through and learn as much as possible about the James Bond series can't go wrong with that one if you just want to learn about the ladies of the James Bond series <laughs> and you could check out the James Bond girls this also is a, a reissue Graham Rye did this this came out to tie in with GoldenEye but there had been one a few years earlier and, you know, this is just mostly a picture book, but it's a very nicely done picture book with an introduction from Cubby. And, of course, breaks things down film by film. There's some good um, promo stills, etc., that I hadn't seen a ton of times before. So it's not as in-depth as one of the other Bond girls uh, books that I'll show you in the next video, but still pretty cool. And it goes through goes through all the way up to uh, Goldeneye. Mini driver. That's classic stuff. And then gives you an ad too for the uh, new VHS series of tapes coming out. Special sneak preview. So look out for those. And um, 
I had to also pick up Garth Pierce's The Making of Goldeneye, and he was the kind of making of biographer for two movies, and I really liked his books. These, uh, I don't even know if they were out released in the States again, so I had to import these. But they just give a good overall feel for the making of the film, and even if you've seen, again, the, the making of pieces on the Blu-rays and the DVDs, etc., there's going to be some stuff in these that you didn't necessarily know. And, uh, you know, it talks pretty frankly about the the rights hold up between uh, MGM and uh, Eon Productions that kept a film from being made for so long and uh, really gets into Pierce Brosnan's connection with the series and how devastated he was when he originally you know, lost the role and uh, you know, it gets into how Timothy Dalton dropped out of the project and how Brosnan was able to get it back. So it was really cool and uh, nice photos and Good overall, uh, oh, again, you can buy those VHS tapes. Good overall, you know, look into the making of GoldenEye. Then uh, Garth came back with an even nicer book. Super oversized, The Making of Tomorrow Never Dies. And, uh, again, don't think it came out here in the States. But um, this... Oh, such a cool book it uh it gets into the the tough times they had making the film and uh how golden eye they had plenty of time to prepare her and this you know it was just like we got to get a film out in theaters how rushed it was and uh just this opening story was you know, a lot more interesting than some of the documentaries I had seen. It really gives you a feel for what it was like to be making the film. And um, it's cool because it um, it's not like extremely structured or focused. It just has these little sections, uh, you know, talking about the friends and the enemies and, and all that stuff. Um, so it doesn't really have uh, an overall concept of of you know beginning to end making of it just gives you little pieces here and there so there's the costume and makeup section uh, but that's the cool thing it actually gives you a, a makeup section it talks about the fashion of the film it actually tells you like what makeup products they use and how they approach the look of each character and how ricky J, of course didn't have any makeup at all uh, but that's something nobody ever talks about in making of like you never see a making of blu-ray special feature and somebody's talking about the makeup. <laughs> so uh, this actually has more real making of a film uh, material than, than you see a lot of times. And of course it talks about the special effects and everything like that and the production design. But that's usually all anybody talks about when they talk about making of. So uh, some issue uh, interviews with Ro Roger Spotswood. And, uh, and the other cool thing was it has a bit where it talks about the Bond women. It talks about uh, with Cecilia Thompson, etc. But then it, it talks into characters who were, you know, smaller characters, and then some who were just, you know, extras essentially. So it's a little bit with Juliet Hendon who plays an extra, and it was really cool because it gives her tale uh, pretty well in, in in depth and and talks about what it was like to be, you know, an extra on the film. So uh, this is one of my favorite you know, making of books. It's a you know, pretty quick read. It's not very, very in-depth, but uh, the breadth of material it talks about is uh, laudable. This is uh, one of the many unofficial releases that came out in the mid-90s. Alan Barnes and Marcus Hearn, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, a unofficial companion. Again, it's not one of those ones that will blow your socks off or give you tons of information you never knew about but it knows that you're a Bond fan and that you have to buy every book and they knew that about me and they were correct so <laughs> a little bit of commentary about the films and of course goes through movie by movie all the way up to I believe maybe tomorrow never dies yep And uh, 
yeah, it's a fun book. Quick read. Uh, this one was a little bit nicer. Lee Pfeiffer and Dave Worrell, The Essential Bond. Got a great kind of matte finish to it. From Harper Entertainment. There was a great period in the mid-90s where you could walk into a Borders Books and Music or a Barnes & Noble and just find tons and tons of books about music and movies. And now you go into a Barnes & Noble and there's a tiny, tiny section. Uh, so it was really this great golden age of movie books. And uh, this was one of the things I picked up, uh, remembering Cubby after Albert R. Broccoli passed away. And uh, much like the other ones, just goes through film by film, but there's some nice photos in here. Rick Van Nutter, he's the man. And uh, gets up to Tomorrow Never Dies. And talks a little bit about Ian Fleming, of course, and the 007 phenomenon. And Yeah, nice book. Good feel for it. Uh, then to pick up, this is one of those DK releases that were ubiquitous. There was a version of this pretty much for everything, for Star Wars, etc. But the secret world of 007 it's just kind of simple coffee table curiosity piece. Some relatively fun stuff. Got a lot of good shots of the props, etc. Just scattered little thought bombs about the films. Pretty cool. A little in-depth description of Dr. Noah's Lair. Uh, at least it had a little bit of a different tack to it than most of the other Bond books at the time. So it was fun. Definitely a nice coffee table piece. Like the uh, artist renditions of all the villainous lairs, etc. And uh, does this get up to anything beyond Tomorrow Never Dies? I don't think so. Oh no, it does have The World Is Not Enough. And then a little bit of cast and crew information about the films at the back. There's nothing you can't find on the IMDb, but it's nice to have a little reference. And since we're up to The World Is not enough. Another making a book. This is the World is Not Enough, a companion from Ian Johnstone. Again, don't believe it was ever published in the States, man. We had it rough with James Bond books for a period there. <laughs> um, this is a pretty, uh, pretty nice hardbound making of. I'll black and white photos as far as I remember. Uh, there's a little bit of color photos here. I haven't read this in a while. I'll have to rip through this again. Um, so a different take than the uh, Gareth Pierce ones. But uh, yeah, not exactly easy to find in the States. But cool book. Then came the era of Greg Williams. His uh, Bond on Set series started with Die Another Day. And I think there's two different versions of this. I've seen another one with a different different photo on the cover. But uh, this is a really cool book. Showing the on-set photographs. From 2002 filming Die Another Day. Yeah, 
got some cool stuff in here. Yeah, nice photo book. And uh, then I also got Laurel Buzero's The Art of Bond. Very nice uh, hardcover book. Talking about all aspects of the artistic process behind making the Bond films. And uh, Lee Pfeiffer and Dave Worrell worked on this one again. But a uh, very nice book. Oh, Daniel Craig, who's that guy? This is the first of the Craig books. We'll cut that off here, and then we'll get into the rest of the uh, Bond books from the Craig era, including all the 50th anniversary stuff that came out in 2012. Uh, but yeah, this is a really gorgeous coffee table book. Some great photos I'd never seen before. And uh, pretty good read overall, too. Recommend hunting down a copy. Yeah, it even talks about the scores, which is pretty cool. And then the title sequences. And a little bit of yeah, advertising. Yeah. Love this book. And, uh, well, yeah, we'll cut it off there. Come back with the stuff from the Craig era. And uh, hopefully you guys had fun checking out my James Bond cinematic reference books. Cheers, everybody. Talk to you soon.